I think that there could be enough pressure put on a government by people, by people, by people, by people in order to in influence, order to influence change. Change, change. I think that the impossible is possible. You know, the United States fought Vietnam and lost. You know, Russia fought Afghanistan and lost. And lost. You know, if those things are possible, then why can't awakening people and making them not just believe everything I say or, or you or anybody else says, but rather asking them to question everything that they're told and, and critically think and make that be the one thing that's associated with America. That's the catalyst that we need in order to create the change that we want. To say, does this pass the litmus test where we can honestly say this is logical, this is reasonable, and this is humane? Do we have a double standard forever? Is that how we're gonna live? Claiming that we don't sponsor terrorism and we don't torture people? You know, for the rest of the world that examines what goes on, do you know what it looks like? It doesn't look like we're at war with radical Islam. It doesn't look like we're at war with communism. It looks like we're at war with people that say no to us. So we're talking about the propagandists who put forward this conventional wisdom and you're right. talking about the litmus test against right. that. And I'm saying that it's interesting that the people who are so pro-war are the ones that had every opportunity and took every deferment in order to not serve their country. And yet they're the ones that are so uh, in favor of sending our troops abroad on these military excursions. And I think that one of the saddest things is people don't realize that even though the casualty count may be significantly less than a conflict like Vietnam, that people are still returning very hurt and very injured. And it's not the sons and daughters of the individuals clamoring, clamoring for war. And even if we talk about the presidential race, everybody on that stage, ex pretty much except Ron Paul, was a non-veteran. And here's a guy who was, you know, vocally opposed to empire building and sending our men and women into these needless encounters and saying, you know, we're justifying this and we can choose a very eloquent way to say it. But at the end of the day, what are we really spending American money and American power and more importantly, and it's very sad but true, the, the actual fabric that makes up the believability of what we tell me. Because now nobody trusts, and not that nobody, but a lot less people trust us than first after 9-11 when we said, you know, we want to get the people that are responsible for this. This could happen in any country. And quickly it became almost looked at as an excuse to be able to do what we, whatever we wanted all over the world when it should have never been that. It should have been the complete opposite. It should have been the wake-up call for us to realize that, you know, whatever we put into the world has definitive consequences. And that if we're at war with terrorism, then we have to be at war with the things that cause terrorism. You know, terrorism is the right answer, I mean, sorry, the wrong answer to the right question. The right question, the right question is, why do we live like this? Why are there two standards of living for people? Why am I oppressed because of what my parents raised me to be in terms of a Muslim or a Christian or, or, or what political persuasion I have? The wrong answer is to kill innocent civilians over it. And even the more wrong answer is to have the counter-revolutionary strategy of just killing civilians in general and claiming that they're combatants and that you're robots but accidentally hit the wrong people. It's a clear case of American exceptionalism. I mean, you're right, we did yeah. almost exactly the opposite of what we should have done. After if, if you don't like the American justice system, I always tell people, uh, you're not going to like the Chinese one. You know? If you don't like an American prison, you're going to like a Russian one even less. But I think that we make these criticisms out of, or I do, I can only answer for myself, I make these criticisms out of the love for a country that I can see being a better place. You know what I mean? When you have a child, or if you have a child, and you, you tell your child not to steal something, or, or you, you hit your child, it's not of hatred. You don't want to destroy your child's life, but you honestly believe that he can be a better person than that, or she is, 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 shouldn't be raised to think that that's the solution to every problem. You know, and that's what we're doing here. And the people that don't want to see America evolve, the people that don't want to see America change, are typically the individuals that are fattening themselves off the corruption of how dysfunctional the system is. Yeah, yeah, yeah.